Jessie and today I have my February book haul for you guys. So this month, uh, in the month of February, I may have gone a little overboard with the book shopping, but you know, it happens. Uh, my daughter recently discovered how much she likes going to Barnes & Noble. So lately, like every Sunday, we've been going to Barnes & Noble as part of our like family day routine. And of course, I pick up something for her, then I pick up something for me. <laughs> it's just kind of how it's been going. But a lot of these are actually from my used bookstore as well. And then some of them were actually gifts. So I'm just going to show you everything that I acquired in the month of February. All right, so the first book was actually one that was sent to me by the author, and this is a self-published YA fantasy that I'm super excited to get to, and that is The Rave. For one, just look at this cover. Like, it is so cool looking. Like, that is kind of what sold me. And then the synopsis, like, I'm just going to read it for you because this sounds so good. When Elena lost her parents, her grandfather gave her a home and a purpose. At the school, he trained her to become an ale fraver, a hunter of arcane beasts, demons, and other anti-human entities. For 10 years, they built a life together. Then one night in the middle of preparing for dinner, Damas vanished. Now 17 and stuck with her grandfather's debts, Alina resorts to illegal raves in her run-down hometown, but these small-town contracts simply aren't enough. The school lies in disrepair, the power shut off, the bills remain insurmountable. In a last-ditch gamble, she signs up for a rave whose massive reward could rewrite her entire future. However, she's far from the only ale fravor to answer the call of such an alluring bounty like this just sounds so good and look at the back look at the back cover there's like a dragon so i'm really really excited to get this y'all know that i've been really focusing a lot more on self-published works this year. So I'm really, really excited to get to this. The next book was one that I pre-ordered because I read the ARC and then absolutely loved the book itself. Had to have a physical copy. And that is Mask of Mirrors. I loved this. It is like a heist fantasy story. So good. I actually have a full review if you want to check it out. I got this from Copperfish Books, which is a local bookstore down in like South Florida more so. Um, but I love it. And actually Leslie at the Nerdy Narrative, it is her like local bookstore near the Orlando area and they ship. So I started kind of ordering more of my books from there to kind of support a smaller, more local business. So yay. I also received a gift from my friend Vish at Books with V and that is The Wolf of Arn Yarrow and I have been dying to read this. For one, the like series title is The Bitch Queen and what else do I need? Pretty sure our main character is a badass mom so that is why Vish thought of me to send it and it just it means so much and I'm so excited to get to this book so yay thank you so much. I also picked up a thousand beginnings and endings. I picked this up actually at my local used bookstore. I'd heard good things about it but I didn't know like the synopsis of it so I just kind of grabbed this on a whim because I'd heard of it and it was at the used bookstore. So I was like, yep, gonna throw that one in the pile. Then I picked up Circe, which I've heard nothing but good things about by Madeleine Miller. And for one, that hardcover is so pretty, right? And this is supposed to be like a retelling of like a, the Greek myth. And I'm super excited to get to this because I don't think I've heard anyone say a bad word about this book. I also got a few books in book boxes this month. One of those is Persephilis. I got this in my read it and eat book box from Kim at Bookmarks and Breadsticks and it is like a graphic novel 
memoir and I'm so excited. If you want to see the entire unboxing, I will link it for you. And then I also have my Aluma Crate book this month and that is Winter's Orbit, which is so pretty. I'll show and link the entire um, unboxing if you want to see that for my first Aluma Crate box. But this is a like male, male, I think it's like more sci-fi than fantasy, but kind of like sci fantasy romance with political intrigue and I'm just here for it. I also, when I went to Barnes and Noble, they have the buy one get one half off like tables. So I grabbed a couple of those like every time I went. And one of them was 10,000 Doors of January. I had heard such good things about this and I'd heard it specifically said like if you like the Starless Sea that you'll probably like this and y'all know like the Starless Sea was one of my favorite books last year. So I can't wait to get to this and it has deckled edges which I feel like a lot of people don't love but like I just I love the feel of them. I don't know why like I just love touching the deckled edges. And I don't really ever see paperbacks with deckled edges. So that was kind of cool to me. Another one of my like buy one get one half off Barnes & Noble purchases was its Declaration of Rice for Magicians. I'd heard this book talked about a little bit right before it came out, but then it's like crickets. I never saw anyone actually talk about it, review it, anything like that. So I was like, you know, why not? Let's pick it up. It seemed kind of cool. Says it's for fans of Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, which I have not read. I want to, but it says it's a sprawling epic of revolution and dark magic. So that just sounds right up my alley. So I'm excited to get to it. Another one of my pre-orders from Copperfish Books was The Witch's Heart and this beauty right here. Look, it even came with like the signed book plate that I stuck in there. And this is like a more like Norse mythology retelling of I think Loki's wife and I'm here for this. It just sounded super, super interesting. And I know I tend to be very hit or miss with more like Viking and Norse type books, but I have high hopes for this one. I also received gifts from my friend Kate over at the Literary Apothecary. I will link her channel. Thank you so much, Kate. These were so sweet and they came at like a perfect time when I was feeling really, really down and really, really sad this month and just had a bunch going on. And then these books showed up at my door with like a sweet note and it like, it made me cry and it meant so much. And the first one is Plain Bad Heroines, which I've seen so many people talk about. I'm super excited to get to this. Like I have just heard such good things about it and I don't a hundred percent know the actual like what it's about but I think it has to do with like witch trials and there's like a dual timeline where part of it is in the past and then part of it's in the future like the present not like the future but like their future so yeah I'm excited to get to this because it just seems really cool and kind of different from what I normally read but like I'm here for it and then she also sent me the Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire illustrated edition to match the rest of my illustrated editions that I have of one two and three and it's just pretty like I know we don't talk about her but I, I have the other ones and my daughter really loves them too so I just I was so excited to get this because the artwork and these are so pretty, like the artwork. I also have been picking up some like of the Barnes and Noble leather bound classics every time I go with my daughter, which sure, why not? Um, I picked up the Han Solo trilogy in this really pretty edition. And it's, just, it's just so pretty. I love Star Wars and anything Star Wars and all the movies. Don't judge me. I liked every single movie. Prequels, the originals, the new ones, the weird like one-off spin-offs. I liked the Han Solo movie. I liked Rogue One. Like judge me all you want. I have not seen one that I didn't enjoy but that's just me. I'm not that critical. 
I'm just like, I had fun, I had a good time, the story was fun, loved it, let's do it again. So I'm excited to get to this as someone who just likes Star Wars all around. I also picked up the complete stories of Edgar Allan Poe. And this is just, again, the Silver Sprayed Edges. It's got the short stories and the poems. If you don't know, my favorite poem by Edgar Allan Poe is Annabelle Lee. I just, I think it's oddly beautiful and disturbing and I love Edgar Allan Poe. So I'm excited to have this for myself and to like, you know, just read every once in a while, pull it out, read a short story because I've read a lot of them, but there's a lot of them in here that I've not read before. Then I got the picture of Dorian Gray, which is again, one of the really pretty Barnes Noble editions. I've been wanting to read this. I never have. I know the story pretty much, but I've never read the book. It is about this like rich nobleman who has a photo or photo, a picture painted of him. And he realizes that basically the picture ages and not him. And like when he does like bad things, the picture is the one that like gets the karma. Like it just seems really cool. And he's like very vain and it kind of explores that. And it's really short and I'm excited to get to this because I just, I remember loving the story itself. And it's just pretty to have on my shelves with the rest of my classics. And the last of the like Barnes and Noble, like pretty classic editions that I picked up this month is Aesop's Fables again that's got the silver sprayed edges and it's just super pretty it's hardback um dorian gray was the softback they didn't have it in the hardback which was fine like i'm not that picky but i am excited i loved aesop's fables as a kid and i don't know why i didn't have a copy to read t with my kids but I'm excited and I do now, so I will be reading these like with the kids kind of as bedtime stories like my mom did for me. All right, we're almost through. I also picked up Bitter Kingdom by Ray Carson. This is the third book in the Girl of Fire and Thorns series. And yes, this one does not match my other two, which are in the like old kind of um, look, but honestly, I don't care because I got them all like super cheap and like used and I just I, I it doesn't bother me that much so yes this does not match the other two but it is the third book and I'm excited because I want to finish the series this year I also picked up Lagoon by Nettie Okorafor and I'm super excited for this I didn't know that this was like even a thing um I saw it like at my local used bookstore and I was like, I need to have that because I adored Benti when I read it last year. And I really want to read Nettie Okorafor's newest novella, um, Remote Control. And I saw this and I think it's like a first contact with aliens book. And I'm like, yep, I need it. I need everything that Nettie Okorafor has written because I absolutely loved Benti. I picked up Akata Witch recently and I'm gonna be reading that. So I just, I love it. And I'm excited to get into this one. Then I picked up A Peculiar Peril by Jeff Vandermeer. And I'm gonna be real honest, I have no idea what this book's about. I just wanted to add it to my Jeff Vandermeer collection because I absolutely loved Bourne. And then I started picking up more of his books so I can have this like nice little Jeff Vanderveer collection to get to. So I have the Southern Reach and then I have Dead Astronauts and now I have this, which I believe is his newest book. And Jeff Vanderveer just writes like weird sci-fi and I'm here for it. I loved Born. It was one of my favorite books last year. So I'm excited to see like more of his really, really unique writing style. And the last book that I picked up was Trail of Lightning by Rebecca Rowanhorse. I recently finished um, Black Sun by the same author. Absolutely loved it. And since book two is obviously not out yet because Black Sun is like a pretty new release, I wanted to pick up, you know, another book from this author because I love Black Sun so much. And this is one of her previous series. I don't think it's completed yet either. I think only two books are out. Correct me if I'm wrong. 
but I picked this up because it's like a post-apocalyptic kind of fantasy world and I'm here for it. I'm super excited. Like I loved her writing in Black Sun, so I have high hopes. All right, so that is everything that I picked up in the month of February. I know it's a little excessive, but I'm pretty sure March will be a lot more toned down just because it's like a busier month and I want to get through a bunch of books before I buy more. I probably will buy one or two more of the like classics editions next time I go to like Barnes and Noble with my daughter because it's just our thing now. But yeah, I mean, I'm never going to say I'm on a book buying ban because I know that doesn't work for me. I like to collect books. I like to have them. I like to have options as a mood reader. So that's that's what I'm going with right now. So now I have to put all of these away back on my shelf somewhere and hopefully you guys had fun hanging out with me seeing what I bought. Let me know what you think of any of these books and I will see you guys next time. Bye!